So we're going to start off with the y-axis assembly. So this is three plates that assemble with these tabs that protrude through the back. You'll see what those are for in a little bit. Before we can start assembling and welding the plates, we need to prep the main plate for the rail systems. That will involve tap drilling and tapping the holes for all the components that get bolted to this plate. I drilled these holes by hand. I thought it would go quicker than using a drill press. I definitely should have used a drill press. Fortunately, with those laser cut holes, there wasn't much drilling that actually had to be done. I'm just opening them up. These holes in the tab locations of the side plates accept these simple little pieces. They are small steel pieces drilled and tapped for a fastener. The completed piece with the fastener is inserted into the hole locations after the rough fit is complete. Tightening down the fastener forces the plates together and substitutes a clamp in areas where conventional clamping may be difficult or impossible. Here the reach and sloping surfaces would make typical clamps challenging to use. Because we're using the cuts to straighten out the plates, fixturing is critical, and this is quite an effective option. This system also allows for easier adjustment of the plates prior to welding. Next, I'm starting with the Z-axis plate assembly. This one is also pretty easy. It's just four plates with 90 degree intersections on all three planes. I had to modify the mid plate with an angle grinder to clear the spindle. This is the first mistake I've found so far. It's all a pretty snug fit, which is exactly what I want. It takes a couple light wax with a hammer to get it to all go together. The plates are drilled for these pass-through holes, which I'm going to insert thread rod to further facilitate the fixturing. I've used this in a few locations. I'm going to take my time with the measuring and checking of the plates before, after, and during welding. I'll burn it in when it's sitting flat on the table so I can make sure there isn't any twist in the assembly. The more time we spend on fabrication, the less time we'll spend on assembly. So far in these smaller assemblies, everything's going together nice and square, nice and flat, and nice and straight. I haven't found any deviation greater than four thousandths of an inch so far, which is a pretty good starting point for a fabricated assembly. Next up is the second largest piece, the gantry. It features five main plates, gantry front with the holes for the rail systems, gantry rear, side plates which are more or less mirrored, and the tub underside with holes for the ball screw bearings. This unit features the same tab assembly method, but the indexing of the plates requires a specific sequence. Two sets of hands and a bit more time with the mallet will be required to get this to fit together. Fitment of the assembly took around 20 minutes with two people. I'm using a combination of all three techniques here. You can see how much simpler the fixturing is with the integrated rod and tab systems combined with some conventional clamps. With all the fitting and clamping complete, we'll start carefully welding the assembly. I have it laying flat on the table 
with the heels of the gantry sitting flat and the upper end supported with some 2-3 blocks. During welding, I repeatedly checked to make sure all my surfaces were flat and tight to their intersecting pieces and that the assembly stayed flat to the slate surface at all four points of contact. My bead spacing is 6 to 8 inches and I moved around the assembly to distribute my heat throughout the welding. Last up is the table itself. This assembly features seven plates and two pieces of structural tube. We'll start with the top surface and the two underside motor mounts. These pieces will help square the sides to the top surface and center the motors with the future screw locations. The end pieces are slightly different from each other as they contain location specific mounting holes for things like bearings and controller parts. This one goes together fairly easily with two sets of hands so long as the proper sequence is used. These plates are the largest on the machine, so the material curves and twists are most evident in this assembly, but these gaps should pull out easily with adequate clamping. Once fitted, we'll use the thread rod and pipe clamps to hold everything together for welding. The thread rod we are using is 3 8 and half inch diameter. Assembly and welding will be completed flat on the table to ensure overall flatness with regular checks for squareness and joint tightness. This is the largest of the fabricated steel assemblies and the last piece we are building. So here we go, here's the update. Everything is is assembled and welded as far as I'm gonna weld it. There's my components here. So this is the tub, this is the base that everything gets bolted to. Gantry and uh, Y-axis plate and then the Z-axis plate. So they're all ready to go. Everything's burned in. Most of my holes are at least tap drilled. Um, they some of them are tapped, they're not all tapped. I was gonna wait until after the finish is on to tap all the holes, just so I don't end up with a bunch of paint in there. But a couple amendments I'll make to future designs. I did add some tube steel up the center of this, as well as inside the bulkhead part of the gantry there. Just to give it a bit more torsional rigidity, I found that when the plates were, even when they were welded together, there was just a bit of twist in the whole thing, um, which, rectified pretty easily with some dimensional steel. So I added that there and there. I had a similar issue on the Y-axis plate here. Just there wasn't enough steel working in opposite directions to straighten out this, this back plate. So there was a bit of a twist and a sort of a bow to it, which I was able to rectify. I just threw a bunch more steel at the back. So just a couple three quarter bar stock, solid bar, and another little laser cut plate I had lying around. And I was able to straighten that out, but in the future designs I'll incorporate some extra cuts and maybe a, a bit of an X brace near the top. That's where we're at, really happy, turned out great. Everything lines up, everything I've measured looks like it's gonna bolt up real nice. Uh, hopefully we don't encounter too many issues when we're putting it together, I don't think we will. There probably will be some little touch-ups, but so far I haven't discovered any um, mistakes in the actual cut files, so the laser cut plate. Uh, actually, I did discover one, but it's an easy fix, so I will address that during assembly. But yeah, pretty happy. So as you can see, I didn't go nuts with the welding. Probably 10 inch spacing on most of those beads, and the beads are pretty short. Kind of 
kept with that theme everywhere. Two main reasons I did that was number one, I didn't want to put a ton of heat into the structure um, and have a lot of distortion. So kept the welding to a minimum. I moved around a lot just to distribute my heat. I took breaks, sort of a slow process, but um, I think it benefited me in the long run because this whole assembly is going to get filled on the underside here with epoxy. It'll it's going to be as good as as a weld when there's two inches of epoxy sitting under all these surfaces. So that'll help with the strength. Not that I'm worried about anything coming apart, but perhaps more welding would take a bit of the a bit more of the resonance out of the structure. But that being said, I think that this combination of welding and adhesive is going to work real good. So this will get this will get filled up underneath there and then this the gantry bulkhead will fill this whole area basically this whole empty cavity will get filled so they'll kind of glue all that together too I think that should work pretty nice I'll show you here Ooh, take my lovely straight edge drop that on the surface there's a bit of welding slag on here which makes it difficult to get a good measurement but you can kind of see what we're dealing with. Super straight, there's no daylight coming out from underneath there. If I could operate a camera and a feeler gauge at the same time, I'd show you. But really, really straight. I could probably shim out any of the final imperfections quite easily. Put that there. So this is obviously where the rails mount. Look at that. In my experience building the last machine out of dimensional steel, I was not even close to that level of straightness before we had to start putting everything together and shimming everything. So this is gonna be a huge step up as far as uh, what we're starting with when we get to the assembly stage. I really don't think I could ask for anything better without having to actually machine these surfaces. So super happy. Think it's gonna work great for what we need it to do. So stay tuned. Next off, we'll send them to powder coating, but before we do that, we installed these covers over all the mounting locations for things like rails and bearing systems. This will ensure that a thick powder coat does not obstruct our assembly process.